hopefully what I'm going to talk to you about today is going to help you make that business plan come alive. I think you're going to think about it differently than you've ever thought about a business plan before. That's what my goal is today. And so uh, I went to Europe uh, in August, and you know, I, and I want to start out with telling you how I come, came up with taking the steps. And I went to uh, Europe in, in August, and you know, I called my son, and I said, Hey, Scott, I said, you got any good books you read? He says, Man, I'm reading a good one right now. You got to read it. And so uh, it's, it was called Taking the Stairs. So you see, I stole this. Okay? <laughs> I call it Taking the Steps. And, and the, the talk is not about the book. But it, it, it made some things very clear to me. And I said, you know, yeah. So I said, I've got an eight-hour plane trip. Okay? I said, I can read this book in eight hours. No problem. So I started reading the book. And by the way, if you want to know who the author, I highly recommend you read it. It's called Taking the Stairs by Rory, R-O-R-Y, B-A-D-E-N. I don't know if it'll change your life, but it changed mine. And I'll explain to you how it changed it, and that's how I came up with taking the steps. You see, when I went over to Europe, uh, I had a problem. Uh, I don't know about you, but probably none of you have ever experienced this problem. But I sat down in the seat, and I could barely get my seat belt on. Okay? And, 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 and so I'm sitting there, and I'm saying, oh, boy, i, I got a problem here. You know, there, there, there's an issue here going on here. And to think I have to sit like this for eight hours. And so, anyway, I started reading this book, Taking the Stairs. And, and all of a sudden, you know, it started making sense to me what I was reading. And, and, and in fact, the guy sitting next to me says, My God, you're very intent on this book or you're reading. And he says, What's this book you're reading? I said, He says, You're taking notes. You're, you're really, I can tell, you're really getting into it. I said, well, it's Taking the Stairs by Rory Baden. And I said, he says, well, tell me, what, what's in that book? What, what's getting you all excited? And I said, well, first of all, it talks about the fact that, you know, 95% of the people take the escalator, not the stairs, when they're right next to each other. And it also said 95% of the people don't read a book cover to cover. Of all the books that are bought, only 5% read a book from cover to cover. And I said, boy, this makes sense to me. You know, I'm going, yeah, yeah. And, and, and he began to talk about, see, everybody wants a quick fix. Everybody wants a quick fix. There's a quickie diet. There's a, there's a quickie way to make millions of dollars in real estate. I mean, how many emails do you get that say, oh, just do this and we're going to send you all these leads, correct? Right? Because we all want to take the shortcut. And, and this was starting to make sense to me. And here I was sitting in my airline seat and I'm saying to myself, yeah, that's me too. How did I get to 267 pounds? When I got married, it was 210. What happened? So, I, and I said, that's why I'm excited about reading this. I said, I think it's talking to me. It's making sense to me. And, you know, one of the things we know is that people will play the lottery instead of budget their money. See, we want to take the easy way. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. So I made a decision. I made a pact with John that was sitting next to me. I made a pact in that day. And I said, I'm going to do something about this. So what I did is I sketched out my plan. My plan to lose weight. I decided I was going to lose 50 pounds. 50 pounds, I haven't been that low since ninth grade. <laughs> I know you don't believe me. I played football in high school at 225 my junior year. I went back to, I went back to my records. Okay, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose 50 pounds, but I had to scribble out a B 
business plan. So I'm going to use that as a comparison as we go through the steps. Now I'm hoping I'm going to make this business plan come alive for you like it's come alive for me. Okay? By the way, I'm down 26. I started September 1st. Yeah, yeah. So I want to take it. I'm going to, I'm, going to I'm going to give you some experiences I've had with this plan. Now the plan was very simple. I'll share it with you as we go along. And at the end of the story, you'll know the more of the story. So you're ready to get started. That's my question. So let me ask you a question. Are you willing to leave your business up to chance? No. Can we afford to leave our business up to chance? I can't afford to leave, leave losing weight up to chance. Can I? got to have a very distinct plan. And yet, it's incomprehensible to me. We go through... We go through the walk of doing a business plan, then we shove it in a drawer, and we don't look at it. We don't make it a part of us. Would you say it's true? If I asked all of you where your business plan is, could you show it to me today? Could you recite it to me what it was that's in that business plan? I know a few of you that can, but most people can't. They go through the exercise, it works about 30 days, and boom. So hopefully we're going to help you through that today. Are we all on the same path? Okay, so let's talk about it. What are the steps you need to take? First of all, we're going to take a look at the vision. You've got to have a vision in order to know where you're going to go. Are you all in agreement with, with me on that? Yeah. Okay, so my question is, how many of you have a vision statement written right now? Anybody got a vision statement written? Okay, so today that will be helpful. Sean does. I do. Okay, you've got to be passionate about what you're doing must be passionate about what you're doing. Third, you better have a good plan. Okay? You better have a plan and it better be alive. Fourth, you got to have accountability for that plan. Right, Dave? Right. Huh? Right. Are you held accountable to that plan? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay? And then, if you do, the vision, the passion, the plan, the accountability, I'll guarantee you you'll have success. I'll guarantee it. I guarantee it. The problem is most people don't have the vision which won't allow them to have the passion which makes the plan useless. You get where I'm going with this? And most people aren't held accountable. In fact, how many of you are being held accountable right now for your business plan? Is there accountability? No surprise. So, see, that's why we what? We don't take the proper steps. That's why we take the easy way instead of the hard way. Because we think we're going to find a way to get there easier, and I won't have to have as much pain. So let's talk a minute here. Let's talk first about vision. Okay, what is a vision? Any, can anybody explain to me what a vision is? When you think of a vision, what, what, what do you think? What do you think? Where are you going? Huh? Where are you, Where are you going? going? Think of an idea. Think of an idea. Okay. So anybody have a vision for their plan for next year? Okay. Would you like to see how one's built? Would you like to build a vision? Is there a volunteer in the room that would like to work on their personal vision? And we'll use that as an example. Charlie? Yeah. Okay, Charlie. So I'm going to ask you some questions. First of all, a vision has, <laughs> you look out five years. Always. A vision is where you're going to. Where do you want to get to? So here's my question, Charlie. What do you see yourself doing in the real estate business five years from now? What do I see myself? Yeah, what do you see? A lot of volume. Uh, I mean, that doesn't do me any good. Closing a transaction, two transactions a month. Closing right. two transactions a month. At least two transactions. At least. What? Let me ask you a question. What do you want to be doing five years from now? What would make you happy? Uh, be sitting on a yacht. Okay, so <laughs> she wants to be on a yacht. Y a c h t. Right? You want to be sitting on a yacht. Uh -huh. What are you going to be doing on that yacht? Huh? <laughs> Toasting to my success. Tell what? I'm Toasting to my success. 
toasty to your, okay, so she's going to be on a yacht. She's going to be toasty, T-O-A-S. <laughs> toasty to success. What else? Um, still handling my business because that's always. But you're, are you handling your business from your yacht? Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay, handling business from the yacht. It's wireless. Massage. <laughs> that can be done with wireless. Wire. 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 Okay, what else? Anything about your business? Um, I see it as just really flourishing. And what do you mean by flourishing? Just a um, lot of... Be specific. A lot of buyers, a lot of sellers. A lot of buyers, a lot of sellers. Are you handling all those calls or what? Um, no, I actually got an assistant. Oh, you got a full-time assistant? Yeah. So you can be on that yacht? Yeah. Okay, full-time assistant, because I don't think you can be on that yacht if you don't. Now, we could go on and on and on on this. Here's my point. Where do you see yourself? Would you like to hear some of the people I'm coaching what their visions are? Would that be helpful to you? Let me uh, bring a couple of them up real quick because I think it would be a help to you to see uh, where, what, now I'm not going to give you the names, okay? They probably wouldn't like that. Uh, let's see. Let's give... Uh, Let's go with, uh, let's see, let's go with Param, oh, no, oh, oh, I can't say it, can I? Okay, now I thought this one was pretty interesting, okay? His vision, rock star, he wants to be a rock star in the 750000 and up range in Mount Lookout in Hyde Park. Wants to provide a better quality of life with less stress for the parent family will result in a full-time assistant. That's his vision. Does that make sense? So he's identified what his market niche is, correct? Okay, he says where he wants to be. He wants to spend time with his family. And what else? What else is in there? He's actually identified the areas. So he understands what that vision is, and it's over 750000 Do you get what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a vision? And here's the biggest mistake I've seen made. Most people don't have the vision. Where do they want to be five, now, five years from now? Well, I want to tell you where I want to be, my vision. Okay, the first thing I did was write down my vision for my way. Well, you know what it is? Now, this is kind of goofy. But it's my vision. I see myself at Mount Adams. I live downtown, down on the right down by the river, and up above is the Church Beckalotta Church. Anybody familiar with that, Mount Adams? Well, guess what? There's 382 steps to go up to that Beckalotta Church. And here's what I see. My vision is that I can go right all the way up those steps, and I'm up there, and I'm going like this. And I'm a sexy human being. <laughs> now that's my vision. All right? Do you get where I'm going with this? That's what I see. I want to be up there. I want to be happy. I want to feel healthy. And I, and I got my whole family around me because I just extended my life and I'm enjoying my grand, grandkids up there. In fact, I'm planning on for Thanksgiving when my son comes. I'm having a family picture taken up there. And I'm going to put that right with my vision. Because that's what I see as a vision. Now, do you think I have a clear vision? Do you think you understand what a vision is now? Now, let me ask you a question. Do you believe if you have a clear vision of where you're going to go, it might be easier to do the rest of the stuff? See, most of us don't have the vision. And if we don't believe in that vision, if it doesn't, it's like a, a powerful magnet. It just pulls you right in. That's why you got to have it. It's like, it's, it just pulls you in. So what I tell the people I work with, I want that vision. I want it in a picture frame. I want it in front of you every day. Because that's where you want to be five years from now. I could read you another one that's quite interesting. Uh, I'll just give you the, the basics of it. Uh, it's, it's from a, a team, and their vision is, five years from now, 
Right now, all their business is on the west side of town. Their vision is to be doing business downtown. Because in five years, all the kids are out of the house, and they see themselves living in downtown, spreading their business from the west side, because they know they're going to move there five years from now. And they see three other people working for them. They're not dealing with buyers anymore. They've got two administrators. And they see themselves being on, going on vacation three months out of the year. Is that a vision? Yeah, that's a vision. That's where I want to go. So then I say, from the vision, what is passion? Because in order to carry that vision out, you must have passion for what you're doing. So how would you describe, how do you know when somebody's passionate? How do you know it? Are, do, do you see people in your life that are very passionate about what they're doing? What do they do? Help me out. What do they do? They act like you. <laughs> they act like me. Do you think I'm passionate Absolutely. about what I'm talking Absolutely. about? Do you think I'm passionate in ProStar? Absolutely. Do you, do you think I believe it? Yes. Yeah. And I don't cut anybody slack, do I? No. Nope. Because I'm so passionate about it. What, what else? Can you think of some other examples of people that are passionate? You can just tell that they enjoy it. They, they love what they're doing, right? They absolutely love it. Sean? They're willing to do the things other people aren't willing to do. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Why do you need that kind of passion? Can you sp think of some sports uh, people? Uh, there's one famous, very passionate plate for Florida. Tebow? Tim Tebow? Remember how passionate he was on the field. Can you think of other passionate people about the game of sport? Or whatever they're in, they're typically what? They are believers in what they're doing, and they're willing to die to get it right. Pete Rose. Pete Rose. Ran to first base every time. Can you think of some other people? Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs of uh, Apple, right? Do you think he was passionate about what he's doing? They said he was insane at times. He was so passionate. He wanted it right. He wanted to get it out. So you see, nobody could get in his way. See, if you don't have the passion, if you don't have the vision, and then you don't have the passion for it, what happens? What do you think happens? Huh? Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Well, I'll tell you what happens. Other things get in the way. That's what happens. You know, think about it as a marriage or a relationship. If you don't have passion, other things get in the way. If you don't guard that relationship, other things get in the way. Right? So, vision, got to have passion. Are we all on the same page? So let me ask you. What's your passion temperature right now about what you're trying to accomplish? Where is that passion right now? Not near where it should be. Not near where, why, why, why do you think that happens? What happens? Busy stuff. Busy stuff. <laughs> yeah, well I'll tell you what happens, you don't have a clear plan. Okay, you're kind of all over the place. Again, that that plan that we've drawn up is what? Is what? It's in the drawer someplace. Right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. How many of you right now can produce your plan for me if I will stop in your office and give me that plan? And how many of you, if I went around the room right now, could you recite your plan? Do you think if you were passionate and had a vision, you would know exactly what your plan is? Would you? I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you. Let me give you an example. I told you I'd tell the story. Do you think if I wasn't passionate about losing 50 pounds, I could get up at 6 o'clock every morning and run 
all those stairs up to Megalata, whether it's raining or whatever, six days a week. Do you think I could do that if I wasn't passionate about what I was doing? Are you doing that? Yes. I want to <laughs> tell you. And I want to tell you. Let me ask you a question. Do you think it was fun in the beginning? How do you think my knees felt? How do you think my legs felt? I couldn't even go halfway without dying. I thought, I'm going to have a heart attack up here. Oh, my God. Oh, my next day, I'm walking around and I can hardly move. My wife says, you're going to kill yourself. Are you taking your cell phone with you? She says, I don't want you doing that. I said, no, this is my plan. This is what I'm going to do. And I had people say, you're, you're destroying your knees. I don't care. I'm going, baby. Nobody's telling me not to go. And I remember it was pouring down rain. And, and she, 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 I, my alarm went off. I sleep. I tend to sleep when, when it's, it's raining. My alarm went off. And, and, and she goes, it's pouring down rain. I said, I made a commitment. I'm passionate about what I'm going. I'm going up those steps. So. You see, I built a plan. The plan was this. I'm going to tell you the plan, then we're going to talk about the plan. The plan was very simple to lose the 50 pounds. It's not how long it would take, because I don't care about that. What I care about are the things that I've got to do to get to where I need to go. Does that make sense? So my plan was very really simple. My plan was very simple. I would take the steps six days a week. I go up to Macalotta Church. I will tell you, it's a hell view. Okay? Now, the other thing was, I was only allowed to have two slices of bread a day, and it was whole wheat bread only. Okay? The other thing was, one dessert a week. One helping. And keep it healthy. That was the plan. I said, if I follow that plan, I will get to that vision. Okay? In fact, I had a hard time finding a suit now. It'll stay on me right now. I had the suit I couldn't wear two months ago. Okay? So, here, let's talk about the plan. Okay, I want to, uh, let's go here. And uh, let's just take a moment to talk about the plan. So, how do we make this plan happen? First, you've got to know your history. Are you there? Know what I mean? You've got to know your history. Why do you need to know your history when you're drawing up a plan? Why do you think you need to know your history? You have to know where you've been. You have to know where you've been. So in my case, 267. Couldn't believe it when I got on the scale. 267. I had to understand that, right? What else? You need to know where you need to improve from. Yeah. So in other words... If you're happy where you are, that's okay. <laughs> but if you're not happy where you are, you got to do what? Something different. So you, in the real estate business, we need to understand what our average sale price is, correct? We need to understand uh, our average sale price for listings, our average sale price for sales. By the way, you've got all this in your office business plan. I know it because I wrote it. Okay? But you got to know all your statistics. By the way... Where is that? You can get it from your manage, manager. It's called. It's an agent dashboard. It'll give you all your statistics for the last year. You need to understand where you are to know what you got to do to get to where you're going to go. Are we all in agreement with that? See, this is what I call the tough stuff. You got to go through the hard to get to the good. Does that make sense? You've got to go through the hard to get to the good. This is what we see what you're made of, right here. Because if you want to increase your business, you're probably going to have to change some things that you are doing. Would you agree? What could some of those things be that you have to change that you are presently doing? What would have to change, Dave? My listing price. There's the average sale price. He wants to bring that up. So he's got to develop a plan in order to make that happen. Correct? What else may you need to change? Number of contacts you make a week. 
number of contacts you need to make a week because if you're going to increase your business, you'll probably have to increase your contacts. Now, here's what I tell people. You see, you can come up with all the things, but that's, that's, that's when the real passion comes in. Because I'll tell you what everybody around you is going to say. Ah, you got to do that stuff. Ah, you'll do it 30 days and that'll be the end of it. In fact, everybody I told my little plan to of going up to those steps, I said, you'll last three weeks. See, people don't want you to succeed. Did, did, did you know that? They don't want you to succeed because they feel un you make them feel uncomfortable when you succeed. Would you agree with that? You know, they don't like people around them succeeding because when you start succeeding, does it make them feel a little bit uncomfortable? So they'll say to you, well, and you say, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. And they say, oh, great idea. They'll never follow through with it. In fact, my wife said to me, oh, I want to see if you're going up those steps 60 days from now. My brother, oh, you always start to you won't finish. I mean, that's why the passion has to be there. Because you can't allow, you can't allow those things to come into your head. Because you'll start believing the people that are surrounding you. In fact, the way you pick your friends can have a lot to do with how successful you're going to be. So let me ask you the question. Are you going to have to do some things that you're probably uncomfortable doing? So are you probably going to have to learn some more skills in order to make that happen? Are you probably going to have to change your calendar or your workday to accomplish what's in your plan? So is it going to make you feel a little uncomfortable? Let me ask the question, does it? How come in the same office with the same manager, we have people doing up to 166 units a year? What is the difference? Same office, two different producers. What do you think the difference is? Any idea? See, these people do the things these people aren't willing to do. And they do it day after day after day after day. And these people, they're not willing to do it day after day after day after day. These people will develop their skills. We have one agent in, in, in our company that goes over, uh, over 150 listing presentations a year. Let me ask you the question. Do you think you would have it down pretty good if you went on 150 listing presentations? Do you think you would even forget how to do a listing? No way. Do you think your skill would be perfected? See, what happens is, in our plan, we don't do it enough to become what? Efficient at doing it. So you see, you're not going to, in the first 30 days, it's going to feel like going up those steps, right? It's going to hurt. By the way, why is it important to hurt? No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain? I'll tell you why. Because when you start breaking through and you start seeing the results, you're not willing to go back to that kind of pain. Do you think I want to skip a day now? I only got 24 to go. Do you think I paid the biggest pain in the first 60 days? Sure. See, and that's what hit me in the book. They said you got to pay the pain up front to get the good results in the end. And if you pay the pain in the front, and expect and do what you have said you're going to do, what happens is, is what? You paid the pain. You're not willing to go back there. In fact, you're feeling pretty good. John, how many times do you think I've told people, I've lost 26 pounds now. I'm feeling pretty good. 
In fact, I got pants I can't wear anymore because if I did, they'd fall off me. All of a sudden, my wife said, Boy, you're looking good. And that's fulfilling my vision of being what? Right. Being a sexy man. <laughs> she says, Oh, the stomach's gone. Works the same way in real estate. All of a sudden, you're getting listings. All of a sudden, you've got a cash flow coming in. Now, what do you do? I want more of this. So what do you think I added on after I've been going up the steps? I now walk an extra half hour after that. Because I'm feeling good. I'm in the groove. I've got it going. What happens to most of us, we try it for two weeks, say, it didn't work, so I quit. I will tell you, I went two weeks without losing a pound. Do you think I was about ready to quit? It hurt. But then all of a sudden, it started falling off again. Because, see, I kept it going. And where most of us make our mistake, we draw up the plan. And if we don't get results right away, then what do we do? Throw it in the drawer. That's the end. I'm not excited about it anymore. Okay. Does that make sense? Is that how most of us are? See, we want to take the escalator and not the steps. I actually went out, I was thinking about videotaping it for the class and just putting a video camera, but I thought they might arrest me. <laughs> okay? And just watching. Every, and I, but I did stand there and I did watch it. 5% took the steps, 95% right up the escalator. That's no different than what we do with our plans. See, that's why that upper 5% get to where they are. They take steps. They do the hard things that most people probably aren't willing to do. So, now accountability. Accountability. Why do you think it's so important to have accountability? Hmm? Anybody tell me? The only way you can measure your success. Yeah. Somebody holds you to the fire, holds you to the plane. Because do you think there will be some tough points when you're going through your plan? When you're trying to make that plan work and it gets a little tough? Do you need somebody that not only will hold you accountable but give you encouragement? Sure. Because don't we all have disappointments? When we're going, don't we all have some of those bad days? But let me put things into perspective. And I think this will help you. If you took a ruler, the average lifespan of, of a typical American is what, 80 years? Last, last I read, it was about 80 years. Okay? If you, took, if you took that ruler and went out, what, 80 feet? That would represent 80 years. Right? Everybody with me? Okay, and there's 12 inches and a foot. Right? So there's 12 inches in a year. Everybody with me? There's 12 months in a year, and that rep represents an inch. A month represents an, in an inch. Let me ask you the question. So when you're having a bad day, is it really relevant It's not. Yet, we start shutting down. We start shutting down when something bad begins to happen, right? Or it, it consumes us. Have you ever seen it in your office? Have you just seen, have you seen those people walk around and say, oh my God, my deal's going, oh my God, my deal's going, oh my God, I got this going in, I got the inspection, oh my God. In reality, it's less than a speck, if you, if you think about it. Does that make sense? Does that kind of put it in perspective? And yet, we'll spend so much time. That's why you got to have somebody hold you accountable, because you'll get off your plan, 
and you won't get back on it. It will derail you. And I see it all the time as I coach people. My job is to get them back on the what? Track. Plan. On the track. On the plan. Now, can, does it have to be your manager to hold you accountable? No. No. It can be. And you've got every right to ask your manager to hold you accountable. Would you agree? Anybody I work with, they're held accountable. But it can be a friend. My person holding me accountable for my ways, my buddy Bob. Bob, we've done triathlons together, and he's the one that's holding me accountable. I want somebody to hold me accountable. And if I'm having a rough day and I really want to eat, I just call Bob. And Bob talks me down. Okay? So my question is, do you have somebody holding you accountable? If you don't, chances are you'll get off your plan. Would you agree? Because don't is that what we do? Yeah. So accountability is big. <laughs> and you know what? If you do all these things, you will what? Let me ask you a question. Do you think you have success? Yes. If you, if you had a, a vision and you are passionate about your vision and you followed your plan and you had somebody holding you accountable, do you think you would have success? By the way, what is success? Whatever we set in our vision. Achieving the vision. Yeah. What, but success, is it measured in how many units you do? Because I will tell you this right now. If it's strictly about how many units you do, you'll never be happy. Do you know why? Because you're going to raise the bar next year. See, that's where the vision comes in. Because if it can make those things happen that you have envisioned, and it's got to be a believable vision, that's when you're going to feel success. You see, my success is not going to be getting up those steps. My success is going to be enjoying my grandchildren. My success is going to be spending more time with lovely Lois, that's what I call her, lovely Lois. That's my wife of 38 years. My success is going to be able to spend time with people that I truly love.